Hey guys, hey ladies, hey friends, hey foes. We just wanted to take a second to remind you that while we're okay swearing when little ears are listening, you might not be, and that's okay. So here's your chance to pause us and wait for nap time, or pop in your earbuds. We hope you enjoy the episode. Me in the straight jacket. Welcome back to another episode of Done Playing by the Rules. I'm Jenna. And I'm Janelle. If you haven't figured that out yet. We're um, going to keep doing it until you do. (laughs) Exactly. So it's just us today. We've had a few guests lately, which has been Mm -hmm. fun. But today we're going to talk a little bit about toxic positivity, which will be interesting. But first, I want to catch up because Janelle had her first after COVID (laughs) post yeah. I still don't know what's going on. I went into a Dunkin' Donuts this morning without my mask on because like yeah. I just was going in to grab something. And I everyone was looking at me really weird. And I live in Illinois mm-hmm. and the laws are like different all over and I don't know what's going on. And Illinois is very um cautious post-COVID, quote unquote. Everyone was giving me kind of weird looks. And then I was like, oh, as I walked out, it was like, must wear mask. And I was like, what? oh no. Every store has different rules. And I didn't even think about it because I was just running in to grab my mobile order. And anyways, I digress. Um, yeah. Minnesota was wonderful. It was our first post-COVID trip. We drove there. We picked up my dad's car and drove Aww. home. And it's going to be running by this weekend. And I'm so excited. That is exciting. So how did you feel going out and seeing people? And I mean, it was really, I felt better than I thought I would. And even Josh said in marriage therapy this week, he's like, she's been so much better, which I was like, mm, I don't really appreciate that tone, but we'll go with because it. <laughs> it implies something was wrong. And I was, yeah, just trying to keep, I was just trying to keep you all healthy. You're welcome. You made it. Right. But now we're like planning other trips and trying to figure stuff out. So I don't know. It's exciting, but it's also like we're planning to have the boys in. So we're going to homeschool again next year. But we're what, what? I signed the boys up for a once a week on Thursdays. They go to like three classes and a lunchtime at a homeschool like in-person co-op thing with like real teachers. What? And I signed them up yesterday and had nightmares all night that COVID just ran rampant through the school. and. So we'll see how long I stay enrolled in that. (laughs) I was going to say, you can always unenroll. Always an option. Yep. Yeah. And it's really cheap to, I mean, not really, like it's affordable, affordable. So if I freak out and Mm -hmm. no money's been collected yet, but Josh was like, why don't you wake me up to talk to me? And I was like, okay, like I should just wake you up in the middle of the night to be like, hey, talk to me about my irrational fears about sending the kids to school one day a week next year. And they're just like, "Uh uh-huh, yeah, and it makes it so much worse. Oh my God, yeah. Like, no, I'm not waking you up so I can just go over this with myself. Exactly, exactly. Well, that's cool. I'm glad you did. We go to What have you guys been doing? You guys are traveling, right? Yeah, but we're RV traveling, so it's not that big of a deal. I know, but I love it. Yeah, but we are going to see my (laughs) cousins. The bubble mobile. Yeah, exactly. Um, we are going to see my cousin soon and I'm a little anxious, but excited. It's been long overdue. They have four kids and they're out in the world a little more and we're staying with them, but I need to do it for the sake of like connections and mental health in terms of connectivity because. Oh, and I wanted I to talk them. about this. I hope this isn't um, too vulnerable. We can always cut it out, but I know that a lot of people think that we're nuts being so concerned about going back out into the world, but just reminders we take being nuts as a compliment also because mm-hmm. my therapist the other the week was like, well, that's not, she was like, that sounds crazy. And then she was like, oh, as a therapist, I'm not supposed to say things sound crazy. And I was like, no, I take it as a compliment. Trust yeah. me. Like, so Jenna has legitimate germophobia. She mm-hmm. had a lot of death adversaries this last month. And uh, both of us oh, have yeah, a lot this summer. You had a ton. <laughs> And so your germophobia ramped up and you told Mm -hmm. me that you felt bad because you were canceling some plans with some friends. And we're also going to do an episode up and coming. We've had a lot of people reach out to us these last couple of weeks saying that they're having trouble navigating the world of real life friendships again after being COVID cautious Mm -hmm. this past year. And so we're going to talk about that. But I just wanted to let everybody know and send out a reminder, be gentle to your people as they come Mm -hmm. out of their bubbles. Some of us have been dealing with stresses and unrelated to COVID. Like even if COVID hadn't happened, Jenna would still be having a heightened germophobia experience right now simply. And there's stuff going around. My friend that works Mm -hmm. um, is a head nurse in the ER here is like, yeah, we've seen a ton of RSV. And so Mm -hmm. 
just know that people that have struggled might still be wearing their masks or yeah. someone might be getting chemo. Like we're not here to mask shame and we're also no. not here to shame people living their life like nothing ever happened. Yeah. But exactly. let's all be accepting of each other as we come out of this. Hopefully yeah. and knock on wood. I think the other thing is like for people who have been so cautious and have been worried about this virus is it's not gone. So yeah, we're coming out, but it's still a struggle because it's not over. So, And we're coming out, but we might be coming into a new, like no one exactly knows what's going to happen with the new variants. And so Mm -hmm. just let people tiptoe out of their hobbit hole at their own speed and love on them regardless, even if they have to break plans with you once or twice, because we've had a multiple people reach out to us in the last couple of weeks because we talk so openly. And I don't think a lot of people talk as openly as we do about Mm -mm. how COVID cautious we were. But so the other people that were hiding under rocks being COVID cautious feel weird now because they have to come back out and reestablish friendships. And sometimes they get nervous and have to go back into hiding. We've all been Mm -hmm. through a collective trauma this year, regardless of if you were worried about COVID or not. People lost jobs, school abruptly ended on a Friday and never started again. Like, let everybody (laughs) catch up. Yeah. And like when we have something every day, like a few weeks ago, we had something every day. And then I was like, I need a week off to kind of reset my mind, get my house in order and just kind of breathe because it was too much at once. So yeah, support your friends. We have to, especially our introvert friends need to rebuild their social stamina. So be sweet (laughs) to our introvert counterparts, all of us. Well, it wasn't even... I know it wasn't even so much socially. It was more like that was a lot of exposure at once. Yeah. So yeah. if we did get something and at this point, it's not even just COVID it's everything because yeah. our immune systems are not where they used to be. It's like, that's just a scary thought in general. Well, you also so. pre COVID had really sick kids for a winter. So I even did. if COVID hadn't happened, I would still be expect you to be getting anxious yeah. because you had really sick kids for an entire winter. Oh so. my gosh. Preschool did us good. It really Not kids. did. It was one kid. My other kid is just like, nah, she picked up. I'm going to eat my Cassie thing. off the driveway. Yeah. Oh, that we can celebrate Ooh. because my daughter is finally passy free with the exception of um, long car rides because it helps with car sickness. But all the passies out of, are out of the house and we've been sleeping through the sad? night. sad? I felt so sad yes! when I got rid of the last ones. I kept one. Yes. I, I kept multiples that I still yep. find them. And then wait till you the day she finds one and tries to suck it and can't do it anymore. Oh my gosh. Mikey did oh that a while ago and he was trying so hard to keep it in his mouth and couldn't because they just don't have that anymore. And it was so, like they used yeah. to sleep with those things in. Mm-hmm. Like now and they she has such a it. strong suck the other day. I was like, suck on my finger like you did your passy and I was like how do you do that like, I know so. they are so okay but you will die the day that free. she can't even remember how to do it. I know I know but <laughs> I just really noticed um our dentist has been very supportive and just said it's her comfort kind of the world's kind of turned upside down don't rush it and her bottom her top teeth have always been kind of funny from it and her bottom teeth are were starting to be impacted and I was like so I talked to her about it and then she was just like okay I'm ready and I was like okay let's do this so yeah so you had to make an urgent trip to build a bear to get her Mm -hmm. a reward and now it's all done yep and she did try and trade her build a bear in that night for a pass and we're like oh honey it (laughs) doesn't work like that that. yeah I'd like to rescind my offer and get my passy for night and my build a bear for day that's something I would do that's why she's my sweet child I know and she's like but I just really love my passies more than anything and I was like I know but you can't baby so but (laughs) she's doing great she's thriving so I can't wait to see what her teeth do and all that stuff. They're going to be so. way less janky since we got back to stop sucking his stuff. He's like, do you remember what my teeth used to look like? And I was like, yeah, you looked kind of nuts. Right? Like you looked like yeah. a really crazy beaver. Yep. And just a preface, my daughter is three and a half. So if you're still struggling with the passies, don't even worry about it because did we get grief over it? Oh yeah. Like the second she turned even 18 months, people are like, aren't you going to take that away? I'm like, nah, she's good. <laughs> Should we just do an episode one time where we talk about all the things that our kids did way, way, yes. way too long. And so all yep. the other moms feel okay about it. Like I can't, I, I won't talk about Zach's diaper situation. <laughs> yet. Oh, we should. We should. We should. I'll Cause I have Zach. a few that came to mind. Or well, I'm trying to think of something terrible happened the other day. And I was like, Oh, Mikey pulled my top down and tried to, you know what? 
Ooh. fully like because he said so he puts his hand in my bra when he's like yeah. anxious still but yeah. he I wasn't really paying attention watching a show and talking to Zach about a Lego and he fully pulled it out and put the in the mu- and I was like oh, no suckle, mom <laughs> we haven't been uh, we've been off of that for almost two years yeah over two years like you don't I wonder if just, he like, saw it well like, I don't wonder too like if he saw it in public because he said he's like can I make it start again because I was like, that's where you used to eat. And he's like, can I make it start again? And I was like, well, I think like scientifically, yes, I've read you can, but you're not going to. No, we're <laughs> no. good, bud. We're good. We're good. I'm enjoying yeah. my minimal amount of non-touching time. Right. So let's dive into it. Toxic positivity. It's been a, I don't want to, I don't know if trend is the right word, but I feel like it's been a, all over social media. It's a trend, I think, because yeah. everything is ha- hashtag blessed, hashtag what is the one that I was reading the other day where it's just constantly well, like, <laughs> so Janelle and I will send things back and it's usually like when shit hits the fan at our house and it'll, it will hash like send a picture and be like, my son crapped on the floor, hashtag blessed. And we use it as a joke now. <laughs> That's our toxic um, positivity. Yeah. So it could be worse. You, yeah. If you don't know, one. according to Google, who we trust for everything, toxic yes. positivity is an obsession with po- with positive thinking. It's the belief that people should put a positive spin on all experiences, even those those that are profoundly tragic. And if you've listened to our grief episode, Janelle and I talked about this in the don't do section, I believe. Like, mm-hmm. don't say, oh, God has a plan when your parent just died or they're in a better they're place. They're in a better place. They're Jinx. not in pain, <laughs> oh, right? So you've already heard us kind of touch on this before. I want to go into this and say, I am generally a positive person, but I feel like I do have a good balance. So I'm not going to sit there and be like, my life sucks. My parents are dead. The world is falling apart. Like this could be your rock song though. This is your debut (laughs) rock song. If you ever have it. Okay. (laughs) My life sucks. My parents are dead. (laughs) Um, But I always do try and see the good in situations, but sometimes I'm not afraid to be like, there's no good right now. This is a Uh -uh. fucking shit show and it sucks, but I do try to see the positive in situations, but also I really try with a conscious effort to not downplay anybody's situation. So it's not saying that you have to be like negative all the time either. And being positive is a bad thing. I want to be negative all the time, (laughs) but let's face it. We all have emotions. Janelle and I have talked about anger which goes to the extreme of rage and anger is a very shameful emotion, which is it really interesting. And I find that I do hide that one a lot. My mom's anniversary was last week and everyone was asking how I was. And I was like, kind of angry. And that was the first time I really admitted that I've dealt with a lot of anger with my parents' deaths. I'm sure you have too. Mm -hmm. And that's all part of the human experience So when we start to deny these emotions of anger and sadness and grief and whatever else you're dealing with, it kind of, I don't know, takes away from the actual human experience and it's not genuine. Yeah. It's not. Part the of article being that I have is exactly, it's quotes exactly what you're saying, and I will link it in the show notes, but it says, failure to effectively process emotions in a timely manner can lead to a myriad of psychological difficulties, including disrupted sleep, increased mm-hmm. substance abuse, risk of an acute stress response, prolonged grief, and even PTSD. So, oh, shit. You're welcome. So it's saying that like, if you're basically denying all these feelings, yep. it can lead to that. All yeah. Of those. And it's been, so wow. the article is from Healthline. It's called toxic positivity is real. And it's a big problem during the pandemic. And we have a list, uh, which we'll also post of toxic positivity versus helpful positivity. So what mm-hmm. Jenna is explaining here is Jenna is a optimistic, positive person. Yeah. She is not toxic positivity. Right. So being optimistic and being a helpfully positive person, but Jenna is also the first to throw in the towel when it like when mm-hmm. I come to her with a situation that is not pretty and is not good, she is the first person to be like, This fucking sucks. Let me sit with yeah. you in it. How can I help? Like, yeah. That's all you have to do to not be toxic and just to be helpful, positive. This sucks. Let me sit with you in it. What can I do? I felt that. But mm-hmm. we'll share the list of toxic positivity versus helpful positivity. 
But I felt the most important part of toxic positivity is denies all emotions except quote unquote positive vibes. Right. A way to morph that to helpful positivity is to understand that not every experience is a good one. No. So if you're on social media, if you're on any platform, spewing constant, constant, my life is perfect, everything's great, you are not making anybody feel comforted and closer to you. You're alienating the human experience and you're also probably making other people feel less than. And so the thing is with toxic positivity is there's not a villain. Mm -mm. The person who is displaying the toxic positivity genuinely believes that by just keeping everything light and happy and moving that they're helping. And Mm -hmm. so they call them platitudes, which is when you just say like any of those like trite um Mm -hmm. phrases they're in a better place look for the good it could be worse at least it's not this the toxic positivity individual is trying to alleviate their suffering by hearing your story and your suffering they're just doing it in a way that they don't realize is minimizes your experience and tries Mm -hmm. to kind of snuff out your pain when you just maybe need to burn it off instead yeah and I think positivity also has this connotation that you're a positive person, you're a better person. And I think I used that correctly. And I've had friends say to me, like, I want to be more positive. And that's great. If you want to do that, do it for yourself. Yeah. But don't do it to your friends because that human connection is so important. And when I have friends come to me and say, I am going through some deep shit, we have some of the best conversations when they come to me and they're like, everything is great in my life. And we went to the beach and we had a party. Like those to me feel like kind of surface level conversations. Mm -hmm. But when they come to me, when things are hard and they're confused and they're having a really hard time, the conversations we have are so genuine and deep. And it's interesting to me because every time I have a friend come to me, even you, Janelle, sometimes a lot of times they start with sorry. But, and I always am like, don't tell me me. you're sorry. And (laughs) you said something to me the other day. I'll have to go back and see. I I love when Jenna calls me out. These are my favorite. It's like free therapy class. And you were like, sorry to be such a downer, but da, 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 da. And this was after I had had a hard week the week before. And I was like, please don't apologize. Like it makes me feel like a good friend that you're coming to me as well as it makes me feel less alone when I just came off of a hard week. And so I just think that you and I have so many overlapping heavy things that sometimes I feel like, Oh, she's not quite out of hers yet. So I don't know why I don't want to jump into mine. And so it's, we have so many overlapping grief situations that it's kind of like, I feel like I have to tiptoe around, but I do need to remember that you and I can like quickly revert back and we're good about you're not going to be on your phone if you're not in a place to deal with my my shit (laughs) exactly and (laughs) honestly if you've listened to our grief episode again you've heard us talk about the lonely island and how you feel like you're alone Mm -hmm. so if you have a friend that is being supportive and just saying it sucks I'm sorry I'm here for you or if you also have a friend even the opposite end who is like I'm having a really hard grief time too. It's like, Hey, come to my Island. Like we can party and let's just talk about how shitty this is. And I'm going to go get some Burger King and we can just continue to talk about how shitty (laughs) this is. Zesty stuff. Right. (laughs) I mean, that kind of stuff even helps. And so you just don't feel alone in it. And I think that's an important point too, is like when we talk about these platitudes, which you'll see if you read any of the articles that we are going to link. Okay. So the person that is, um, the platitudes we talked about, such as just stay positive, everything happens for a reason. And my least favorite, happiness is a choice. They aren't necessarily trying to diminish what you're going through. But what you and I talk about a lot and what I've been doing with friends a lot and you when you were having your hard days and your hard death anniversaries, and a couple of my friends have lost grandparents recently. Mm-hmm. The best thing you can do When someone's going through a hard time, whether it's a job loss, a sick child, anything, send them a text or a Marco Polo or an Instagram and just say, hi, friend, thinking about you. Let me know if you need anything. I'm sorry you're dealing with this. Yeah. You don't need to make it better for them. The 
best thing you can do is come alongside of them and stop trying to fix it for them Mm -hmm. because you can't fix problems for anyone. And so what my article, Toxic Positivity from Very Well Mind, says is at their best, such statements such as happiness is a choice come off as trite platitudes that let you, the sayer, off the hook so you don't have to deal with other people's feelings. At Mm -hmm. their worst, these comments end up shaming and blaming people who are often dealing with incredibly difficult situations. Toxic positivity denies people the authentic support that they need to cope with what they are facing. Yeah, I completely agree. And to me, if... Someone is going through a hard time and I call them blanket statements, kind Mm -hmm. of like what you could say to anyone. It's not personal. Yeah. To me, that also just seems so unauthentic and I don't want to hear my blood boil. Oh, well, and it was like, even to me also a lot of toxic positivity is basically the person who is saying these statements is telling the other person what to do. Instead yeah, of just letting true. them be there. Yeah. yeah. And so it's like, like even with my mom's death anniversary, so many people said, think of the good memories that you had with your mom. And if you knew me during that time, you know, that I was the one that had to call my brother. I had to call my grandparents, her parents. I had to call my dad. I had to call her brother, my mom's brother and all her friends and say, mom is passing come now and I need help. My mom's was really good at hiding it. So her friends didn't even know that passing was a possibility. They just thought she was battling cancer. And so to me, yeah, to me, all of those are what I was thinking about. I was thinking the 4th of July was the last time I was able to get her out of bed. And then this is the day I had to call her doctor and ask about hospice. And this is the day my family came to say goodbye. This is the time she stopped talking. Like, so everyone was like trying to tell me, like, think of the good times. And I was like, my mom's death anniversary is not just the day it's the week leading up to, because that week was so hard with my dad. It was more like the day of he was in hospice. I didn't have to do all of the stuff I had to do with my mom. And so when people said that I kind of got pissed and didn't really respond to too many people. Janelle was wonderful. She sent me a care package of junk food, which was amazing. All (laughs) vegan, of course, and just sent me messages throughout the day. They were not questions. They were just like, today sucks. And then at the end of the day, she was like, you made it through the day. Tomorrow will be better. And it was, it just meant the world to me because it was like, I didn't have to respond to them. My brother did the same thing. We just sent messages like, love you. We made it through the day and that's about it. And that's about the extent of where I felt like conversations could really go that day. And I had a lot of other people just reach out and be like, well, just think of the great times today and then talk about something random. And I'm just like, delete. I can't handle that right now. So (laughs) I love you all. I love you to death, but I just couldn't handle it. But I think that's an important part of it is don't ask things of the person going through things. And you and I talk a lot about grief in this podcast because it's kind of our wheelhouse. But Mm -hmm. the the person whose husband lost their job in the pandemic, Mm -hmm. the person who didn't get to go to someone's funeral in the pandemic, the person whose kid lost the best classroom of kids ever. Like, yeah. Even just struggling with anxiety or depression and it's a new thing for them to handle. Don't tell people like, oh, you know, cheer up, buck up, pal. Like you have so much to be. And I do this to Josh. I say to Josh, like Josh, like I'm just having a hard time. And I'll be like, what could you have to, you have a successful career, a great family, the best kids. You have a bunch of cars. Best wife ever. I mean, look at me. (laughs) And I'm like ratty hair and like a dirty sweatshirt with peanut butter. Look at me. But like I constantly say it to Josh. I completely dismiss his feelings for my own, like, ooh, that means something's wrong with me. And I think that that's a good example is if he starts to say something negative about his life I immediately like think that it's directed towards me and it's Mm. his experience and I'm trying to make it about me and that's where this stuff comes from like oh you could have it so much worse you could have this you could have that like and that's what they talk a lot about in grief too but like let's talk about it in terms of job loss in terms of any of these things that have happened like I constantly am telling myself like oh well so and so actually lost someone to COVID so their year was worse and like 
yes, this last year has been trying for everyone for different reasons, but don't dismiss your own struggles Mm -hmm. for someone else's struggle being more difficult. It's not a competition. Keep it all separate. That's what I always There's enough people. bullshit for all of us to share. Yep. And if you don't have any, I'll sprinkle a little your, your oh, way. Oh, Jenna's got plenty <laughs> for you. Oh, my Lord. You don't even know. The, you've seen the tip of Jenna's iceberg. She'll exactly. bring her whole iceberg out I'll one day. I'll bring it out for you. Okay. So some examples that I thought were really important, and we're going to link this very well article. So here, I'm going to read a list, and I'm going to say the toxic statement versus the non-toxic alternative. Ooh. Toxic statement. Just stay positive. Non-toxic alternative. I'm listening. (gasps) Imagine just saying I'm listening to people. Mm -hmm. Jenna's looking at her thing. I think we have the same article. Wait, can I throw mine in that go with it? Do yours. Yes. Positive vibes only, which you see everywhere. I'm here for you, both good and bad. Oh, I love that. And that's something I've been working on with my kids. When my kids are having big feelings, Aww. I love you. I'm sorry you're having a – Mikey will frequently be like, I'm just having a hard day. And I'll be like, yeah. okay, I'm sorry you're having a hard day. How can I help your day be better? Because Aww. normally I'd be like, go take a nap then. Right. That's what I do what when I'm having a What could be wrong with day. you? Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Good vibes only. Yep. It could be worse. Mm-hmm. Alternative. Just We're reading the same list, aren't we? No, not at all, actually. Um, It could be worse. The healthy alternative. That, that must be really hard. Oh my God, how good would that make you feel when someone says that must be really hard? Mm-hmm. I want to add in my favorite statement of that sucks. Love or, that That's sucks. shitty. That shitty feels so good when someone says mm-hmm. it to you. Because I'm sorry no... you're going through this. Yeah. <sighs> yes. Yep. There's nothing that makes me feel more seen and heard and authenticated. And that's a big part of it. And like, mm-hmm. I like the idea of being authenticated. So think of like you swipe your credit card and it says authorized. Like I yeah. want my feelings to be <laughs> authenticated and authorized and heard yes. and regurgitated to me in that's shitty. I'm sorry. Things happen for a reason. Bad. Good. Sometimes bad things happen. How can I help? Yep. I <laughs> had that one and it said, sometimes we draw the short straw in life. So very similar. Oh, I love that. Yeah. And then, oh, and then add, how can I support you during this time? Which I love that added. How can I help you? How can I support you? What can I do for you? This is one I also really love, uh, which we've been working on with the kids. Failure isn't an option, which I heard as a child growing up. And the non-toxic alternative, failure is part of life. Yep. Mine says part of growth and success. I love it. I love it. And I'm going to steal that one. I read a lot of articles that talk about how kids that learn to fail Mm -hmm. really learn how to grow and not get beat down when they screw up when they're on their own. So when my kid isn't good at something, I say, guess what? When I started that, I was terrible at it. And guess what? I just kept doing it until I either got good or I also use my tennis example all the time. Like mom never got good at tennis, but she kept going because she liked it. (laughs) Well, and I heard Somebody, I can't remember who, could have been our good old friend, Dr. Becky, who has no idea oh, we exist. Oh, she, I know, but we yep. just act like she's our friend. Yes. Say, <laughs> like to your, if your kids are failing at something, be like, well, we're not good at everything and that's normal. And this leaves room for someone else to be good at this. Oh, I love and that. it's like, okay. Like, especially if it's like a competition type thing and their friend is better. I was like, that's a good yeah, one. That's what really else you got? One. I think I have one more, which is, oh, our favorite. Happiness is a choice. How about we replace that with your feelings are valid? Mm -hmm. Ah, that's what I need to work on with Josh. When he says, I'm so frustrated. And instead of going down the list of the reasons his life are perfect, he, if I said your feelings are valid, valid, he would faint on the floor and I'd have to give him CPR. (laughs) Please record it. And he's just going to be like, what? Oh my God. He's going to be like, you're fully gone. Did you take your medicine today? (laughs) Yes, exactly. Oh, that's my favorite. Are you still on your medication? Yeah. Did you take your medicine? To- yeah, my meds are good. Don't you yep. worry. Um, I'll throw in a few more. Look for the uh, silver lining or uh, look for the positive. Look for whatever. Uh, forgot about Instead of lining. that, say, I see you. I'm here for you. Everything will work out in the end. So instead of that, say, this is really hard. I'm thinking of you. Love. And two more. Don't worry. Be happy. Which... <laughs> It's a good song. <laughs> is it? So validate their feelings and say, I see that you're really stressed or going through a hard time. Is there anything I can do? And the last, this is one of my favorites that I got. Don't think about it. 
stay positive. How can I not think about it? Okay. So you tell the person, describe to me what you're feeling. I'm listening. Oh That's my, my favorite. God. Don't think about it. Well, <laughs> if you oh had God. an anxious mind, you know, that doesn't quite work. That's humanly impossible. All I do. That's what Josh says right. to me too. Cause like last night I woke up at 3am and I just laid in bed and it was just like, I'd been having weird dreams. I also realized Josh wasn't sleeping with his sleep apnea machine on. So I was like, probably not even mm-hmm. sleeping. And I was laying there at 3am going through all of my anxious checklists. And like, when I got up this morning, he's like, why don't you just shut your brain off and go to sleep? And I'm like, oh, cute. Okay. You think that's an option yeah. for people like me. It's not. <laughs> or the signs from the universe. Um, I texted Janelle because I almost had a breakdown in PT. I felt like everyone could see the grief on my face. I went to PT yes. on my mom's grief anniversary. And of course it, or grief, death anniversary. Of course it's in the like morning. anniversary better now. Right? And then I got over it. I was like, okay, I've got it. I got a hold of myself. I got a hold of my emotions. Didn't break down. And I'm walking out of PT and I'm like, okay, I'm doing good, doing good. Not thinking about it. Just walking to my car, checking my messages. The license plate next to my car says, I miss mom. And I was like, thanks universe. <laughs> thanks for throwing that one out there. So then I thought uh, about your it more, mom's, so. Yes. Yep. No, but that's true. I know right that feeling where your face feels hot because you feel like even though you're in a mask, yes. I know Jed is still wearing a mask to PT. I don't even have mm. to ask. You have but- to actually. Oh, because oh, the medical building. Yes. Yep. I know, I only know that because I've had to have a couple Botox touch-ups. And <laughs> <laughs> Same thing. Um, but I think that you seeing this, that is a sign and thinking of that in a positive way, someone who's toxic positivity might see that differently and be like, oh, yeah. you know, that's, that's, don't pay attention to that. That's just a coincidence. Right. Like don't, cause sitting with the feelings of someone that is, and again, it's not their fault. It's just mm-hmm. sitting in yucky feelings doesn't feel good for a lot of people. And I get it. I yeah. don't love it either. And I do toxic positivity to my husband. I don't fuck with it with other mom friends. Like I can't I agree. toxic positivity with other mom friends. Yeah. And I can't with the like, this article here talks a lot about how like this person on social media is talking about their glow up during lockdown and how great they've mm-hmm. changed their lives around. And like, if you're really happy in your life, you don't need to post about how much better you're doing than everyone all the time. Exactly. It's just, it's not endearing. So think no. about- I posted something the other day and I deleted it because I was like, oh, the, like no one needs to see this. There's people going through Josh. Oh, Josh's new car. I posted it and then I deleted mm. it because I was like, people don't need to see my husband's new car. Like, yeah, it's exciting to me. But like there's people going through job loss and stuff. And that's just not a place th- that I want to be right now. Yeah. Yeah. When it's like, I don't know. It's it's such a hard line personally, I think, to say like you like you should be proud of your successes in life. Mm -hmm. but like with Josh's job and everything, you guys also went through shit and had to move because of work. So you guys were in this hard place, but of course, if you're not a good friend with somebody on social media, you usually don't see those shitty times. There are a few people though, that overshare about the hard times, which is a whole other thing. And it's just, I don't know. It's, it's but really- I think that that comes from, and I have not been able to figure out like the sociology. I don't even know that might not be the right word, but I can't figure the psychology of over talking about negative experiences. That is something that is feeding something mm-hmm. in them. So I try so hard not to judge it, but it also is hard for me to tolerate. And I will usually bl- like mute those people if it gets yeah. to be. Because you and I are both such empaths that if someone's mm-hmm. constantly posting negativity, I can't keep taking it on and yeah. I'll reach out to them and it's be like, how can I help? And like, right. I'm not in that place to be helping people all the time. So, well, and personally, those people that are usually posting that when we do offer to help and you and I have talked about this, they mm-hmm. don't ever take the advice. And no. so it's kind of like, what is going on here? You're not taking the advice and everything I say, it's like, no, no, no. So it's really hard to kind of tell. What's going Let's on leave the corrective behavior to the professionals if we've learned anything from Virginia is that right? you and I can't fix everyone. Even nope. if, reach out once and say, what can I do? How yeah. can I help? And then every once in a while, you know, check in and just say thinking of you, mm-hmm. but don't get it, don't yeah. get bogged down in the quicksand. But yeah, I wanted to touch a little bit about how it impacts relationships as well as people, mm-hmm. because yes. I know personally, like 
when I've gone through hard times, I tend to internalize them for a long time. And one, I have a hard time making connections with people, but I feel like a lot of that comes from when I have gone through hard times, I have experienced toxic positivity and it elicits shame in the person that is trying to express any emotion besides positivity, which we've mentioned. Mm -hmm. And so then the person that's going through that feels like they have to silence their feelings. If it's not positive, I don't want to share it. And that is a big part of social media. I know personally, I don't post a ton of hard stuff. And so then I feel like it, or I don't feel like it does. It suppresses emotions, which Mm -hmm. like you mentioned at the beginning, starts to stress out the body. And so if we're not in a tribe, a group of friends, family that we can express our emotions to imagine how one unauthentic that is as two, how stressful that is. Because for example, like when I was in PT and I was trying to get myself together, that was so stressful. And eventually throughout the day, that buildup of feelings and anger and grief did have to come out and cortisol, like all of the, you're having a actual hormone response. Yes. And that's when you start to spiral. And a lot of the times your spiral is caused by this initial feeling that you tried to Mm -hmm. hide and then add on anything else that kind of goes in there. And then you're just full tornado and unpacking that is so much more complicated than if you just admitted how you were feeling in the beginning. Now I'm not saying in my situation, like go into PT and be like, everybody, it's a death anniversary. I'm going to look at me. Session. Like, yeah, no, I didn't feel like it was the right context for me to bring it up. But then afterwards I expressed to my husband and Janelle how hard it was. And I had my moment and I got that out and that's about it. So it also leads to isolation and other problems in your relationships. You lose connection with that person as well as relatability. And I know we've all been in the situation where someone's like, I just don't really understand why that's a big deal, or I don't understand why that's upsetting you. And so if we can just step back from ourselves, cause that's making about yourselves. If you don't understand why somebody is going through a hard time, just say, Oh, wow, that's a lot. What can I do to help you? Or, Oh, wow, that's a lot. Do you want to talk more about it? It doesn't mean you have to understand, just sit no. there and listen. But yeah, I've had I don't know. A lot of people say like, I just want to be more positive in my life. And I always say with a word of caution, okay, but please don't stop coming to me with your problems. Yes. Okay. And And that's another one I want to talk about was, um, they talk in this article that the number one goal is happiness. We, you know, this is, I'm telling you this, this isn't, but I've read it in the articles, Mm -hmm. but that is everything Americans do traditionally. And I'm obviously not speaking for everyone is we buy more things to be happy. We make more money to be happy. We want our bodies to look a certain way Mm -hmm. to be. Everything is judged around happiness. So any feelings that like trickle away from mainstream happiness are seen as something's wrong. There's a cog Mm. in the system. There's a rock in the pool. Like everything is seen as off. And so people want to correct that to keep Mm -hmm. everything moving. And so- Carol continues from this article, judging yourself for feeling pain, sadness, jealousy, which are all part of the human experience and are transient emotions, which means they come and they go, leads to what is referred to as secondary emotions. And these secondary Mm -hmm. emotions, if you are judging yourself for feeling pain, sadness, or jealousy, the secondary emotions you can expect are shame and a much more intense grief which are more maladaptive than just sitting with the emotion. Mm. So sitting with the emotion, the initial emotion is like you said, way easier than trying to dig out the emotion that you've shoved down because that's just the way our brain chemistry works. When you shove it down, it gets harder and harder and harder to excavate. And so Mm -hmm. then it just turns into kind of a shame. I hate the cliche shame spiral, but it is kind of true. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) And can we normalize just being content? I think that has been something that I have really realized. Yes. Just because you're not happy doesn't mean Mm -hmm. you're sad or angry. Like the feeling of content is such a beautiful thing. And I feel like we have really started at our house to live slower. And I feel so many more days where I just feel content. And at first that was an uncomfortable feeling because I was like, I need to feel a little bit more of an extreme emotion. I need to be super happy 
or upset, angry, going through a hard time. And the feeling Mm. of content was very hard for me to kind of grasp. And now I'm like, it is such a beautiful feeling. And I still have those peaks of happiness. Like today we are sitting by my in-laws pool and I was just looking at my two kids eating an ice cream cone. And I just felt that surge of love and joy and true happiness. Yeah. And then it faded, but it doesn't mean I'm unhappy. I'm just content. I'm content being at home with my kids. And I think normalizing being content is something that needs to be done. I would love if we could all aim for content because I am very bad at content. I was writing when I was writing the notes about this, because a lot of these articles talk about learning to sit with your feelings, which Mm -hmm. brings you to an area of contentment. And Jenna and I have talked on the podcast before where like when I start to feel feelings that make me feel a certain way, I need to do something. Mm -hmm. So I either and I often turn to like shopping online or exercising or I've done food controlling Mm -hmm. um, and disordered eating. And so learning to just sit with the feelings it's hard, and it's uncomfortable. Right? Yeah, it's so uncomfortable, and it's extra hard right now. And one of these articles talks about with something as unpredictable and as uncertain as COVID nineteen, a knee jerk reaction might be to slap on an overly optimistic or positive face to accept the painful, to avoid accepting a painful reality. But the reality right now is painful, mm-hmm. and. The, it went on to say six in 10 Americans say they've experienced strong negative emotions like anxiety, depression, loneliness, or hopelessness in the past week during the pandemic, a report mm-hmm. out of the University of Chicago. So sitting in contentment is mm-hmm. something that takes a lot of work and a lot of identifying what your triggers are. And I'm reading another book about called What Happened to You, and it's Oprah Winfrey in, in uh, interviewing a psychologist and yes that's learn. On list. have you re- oh I'll send it to you when I'm done because it's kind of expensive Ooh. but I got it at Costco for cheap it is so good but it learn it talks to you about like looking for what the th- thread is through your life and the mm-hmm. feeling that you see coming time after time that makes you feel uncomfortable identifying that and learning to sit with it and examine why you keep bringing in the same people into your life whether it's mm-hmm. a partner a friend a boss you keep bringing the same type of people in your life and it keeps making you feel a certain way. So once you can identify that and sit with it and process it, then you can kind of re Oprah uses intention. She does everything with intention and I'm not like, yay, Oprah. I subscribe. Right. Like, Oprah's Oprah to me. She's not that big of a deal, but she is a big deal because yeah. she's Oprah, but she <laughs> talks a lot about how she does everything with intention. So I think if we can bring contentment, and intention into the conversation, we can start to diffuse the toxic positivity that is just meant mm-hmm. to be like a slap on band aid to yes. any sort of icky feelings. Well, and I was even watching a show the other day. I can't remember. It's that new sex show on Netflix. That's Sex Life. Is that what it's called? You're not it's watching like all Sex over. Life. Maybe yeah, I it's am. Sex Life. <gasps> I'm and, proud of you. <laughs> and the <laughs> woman starts kind of having a breakdown with these friends and they're like oh we don't have to talk about it and it's like that is such a common thing that show has so many of the topics we've talked about on this podcast like she gets into soulmates it like a few episodes in and like that part right there where they're like let's just not talk about how much we hate our husbands like let's just brush it under the rug yeah fine we're shopping let's go buy some cupcakes (laughs) exactly and I kind of giggled because it's so relatable Mm -hmm. and if you are experiencing that I'm sorry. Um, And this is going to be harsh, but I think you either need to have a talk with your friends or find a friend or friends that you can be authentic with because you just apologize before telling people to get less shitty friends, by the way. So no, I mean like, I'm sorry you're going through that. No, I thought you meant I'm sorry. I have to say this. I was like, no, 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 you say this. It's going to, it sucks. Like say it, it does suck. If, and we admit how many friends have you had that were just like brush it under the rug friends? And yeah. we're going to do an episode about different types of female friendships too. Mm-hmm. Um, in one of my other 15 books I'm reading, it talks about the different <laughs> kinds of friends. Yeah, But you're right. And I'm sorry if, if you truly have no one that you can be super like raw and authentic with when something goes wrong, that seems weird and mindless. And they yeah. can't like say like, oh, you're having this reaction because of this. Like the other day when I caught, yeah. when I, was it, I thought I was going to be in a tornado and I called you and my sister and was like, 
okay, just so you know, if something happens to me, you guys have like shared custody of my kids. And was it you or my sister that was like, this is a trauma reaction. Like yes. you are having yeah. a trauma experience right now. It's like, oh my God, yep. I am. Yeah, like, it's th- so true. There was no immediate threat, but I needed to make sure I had all my duck. Like, so if you have no one that you can call when you think a tornado is coming, right. find a friend you can call that yeah. will talk you off the ledge and talk you down and call you on it. And a lot of times when you're in these hard moments, even if you're just having a day where you're like, I don't feel great, like not mm-hmm. physically sick, but just kind of mentally off yeah. or even a week and you're not exactly sure. I've had so many times where I've gone to my girlfriends and said, I don't know, something's not right. And they have such good advice or an outsider's view and said, Hey, remember this is coming up or remember this happened. Yeah. Like maybe you're kind of dealing with this that I would never get to that conclusion on my own. And so yeah. even that in itself, like from an outside pers- person's perspective, it adds so much to what you're going through. So it does. And I've friends. had that, I've had to do that with you is when I remember I came home from my last trip and I would, didn't feel good for a few days yeah. and you were like, Oh, it was probably, you know, you were in a different climate and yep. allergies and you're tired and you drove a lot and I just rested for a few. And that's another part I think of toxic positivity is this inherent need to perform at a hundred percent every day. Mm-hmm. And Jenna's really good about this is like, you need it. Like I would work out seven days a week. I have she to would. talk myself. I would. And I have to talk myself out of it. And my body actually really performs much better when I don't do it. And I feel much better and I'm much, much less likely to just get these random sick days. Yeah. And that's because Jenna has had the time to explain to me, like, you need to rest. And I have body really come to something. a place where I can yeah. let my body rest that I never would have before. I used to be like, I need to get up and close oh God, these Apple watches and getting up and closing yeah. my rings is like you have, to, you were, to- I'm wearing toxic positivity on my goddamn right? wrist every day. Like I'll be doing stuff and it'll be like, Ooh, Janelle uses my name. Like we're friends. What? Um, you're usually much further along in your mood, move rings by now. Let's get moving. And I want to oh be my like, gosh. bitch, you are a watch. You work right? for me. Like, I can't you just be like, Apple. good job getting off on the couch to get those Cheetos. Yeah, like, <laughs> God, those kids are a lot. How do you listen right? to this all day? That's what my watch should say. Bravo yeah. for keeping them kids alive today. <laughs> Good job so for like, taking a rest day. Yeah. Let's- and that's what it is. It's like, if I take a rest day, my watch is like, Ooh, uh-huh. try. it'll literally tell me like, try to close your rings today. And I'm like, yeah. no, I'm actively for me, actively not exercising is a bigger triumph than closing right. my rings. I can do every day, which sounds like yeah. super cocky, but like, that's my anxious state, my anxious state, yeah. my resting fucking I was reading an article the other day that was talking about people with anxieties, like resting blood Mm -hmm. pressure is so much higher than people without. Like my resting heart rate is plenty high. I will be fine. (laughs) My anxiety keeps me in check. Exactly. And I had a Fitbit for a while, like before the Apple watches and I had to take it off because I was so stressed. It was either I didn't have enough activity or enough sleep. And I'm like, how do I accomplish both? I can't do it all. (laughs) And I had a baby. Um, And I kind of wanted to go back to the content topic real quick, because that is something that I have struggled with as well as sitting in your feelings, Mm -hmm. meditation, which you've heard me talk about is such a big thing. I think personally for that, even when I'm going through a really hard time, the other night I was just feeling kind of like anxious and it was grief related. And so I meditated. It didn't mean it got rid of those feelings. I actually sat in those feelings and cried through the whole meditation and felt so much better afterwards, even though it wasn't like a Oh, soothing, calm meditation. I just <laughs> cried through it. And if you ever need help getting started with meditation, I'm here for you. Jenna have- will send you a cleansing, crying meditation any hour right? of the day. She has to do it. So I'll be like, I need to yes. cry. And she'll just be like, here's your, here's your Peloton yep. exercise of the day. Cause I struggled with meditation for a long time. Like, am I doing I it right? I still do. Yeah. yeah. Just fucking do it. You're doing it right. If you're yeah. sitting there and even if your thoughts are your to-do list, you're making progress towards that content feeling. And there's times where I meditate and I just feel content the whole time and I just sit there with it. And it's, it's great. That must be nice. I, I'm yeah. kind of jealous of you right now. I Do the sleep one on Peloton. If you have Peloton, I know Janelle does the sleep 
meditation. I think it's well, like even a if, yeah, you course. Can probably, oh, it's a course. Yeah, it's so good. It who will listen to difference. my dismemberment stories while I'm falling asleep if I'm listening to sleep meditation? <laughs> You'll sleep a little better, I promise. No, and it's it was <laughs> the one really I was listening to last night was so graphic. I was like, if Josh oh comes in gosh. here and hears this, he's gonna free like, <laughs> <laughs> right? So, but yeah, but I mean, going back to what Janelle said, I'm kind of all over the board today. I like it. I do struggle when Brandon isn't as positive. It's like, I should have these feelings and I'm going to have all the feelings. But I you can't can. have you have them right now. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. And I think it makes us a little uncomfortable, kind of like you said, because it's like, is he spiraling because of me? Is it something I did? Mm. Am I not doing something good enough? And again, it goes yeah. back to that kind of selfish thought of me, me, me versus yeah. we should be concentrating on our husbands. But I completely agree. Or what if we're both start spiraling and- Who's going to care for Who's the kids? Care if we're for both? The kids? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It is a very, we were talking to our couples therapist this week, and Josh was saying, like, I feel like these kids just aren't as grateful as I would hope they would be. And this and that. And it was like very, and the couples there, and I've studied child psychology as well and do it for fun. And the couples, yeah. and I said to the therapist, kids that are seven and four are not supposed to be grateful for things. Kids are not weird. grateful. Mm-mm. And she said, the best thing that my professor ever told me when I was going for my PhD was meet a child, the world's smallest, strongest narcissist. And yeah. so it is. And it's true. They aren't so, like, if I had a kid that was overly grateful and he's just like, they don't understand where money comes from. They don't understand how much I spend on things. And I was like, they're not supposed to. No. If they did, they'd be weird little economists. Like, and they, they are wouldn't not. feel, they probably wouldn't, if they understood that there would, unless their parents did a great job explaining it, it's probably because of a lack of, and a lack of security. Yeah. And so the yeah. fact that like your kids don't have that means that they're not worrying about it. And therefore yeah. means your kids are feel safe and secure. And that's a yes. beautiful thing. But that's the same thing with us is like, we are narcissistic, small children inside, even yeah. though we look like grown ups, And so we, our husband starts saying something doesn't feel right. And we're immediately like, where are my shortcomings? And yes, let's make it a point, And I'm going to try this week to make it a point to not think that when Josh is complaining about something, it's about me because it's yeah. probably not. I mean, and you're great about doing that on a friend level. So it's there. I am. I am, yeah. but I'm not great. No one's good. We treat, mm-hmm. I, one of my therapists said once, if we treated our husbands, like we treated our best friends, mm-hmm. everyone would be married forever. Aww. And we don't and have though. kick-ass outfits. Yeah. I know. It'd be so <laughs> cute. And Josh would stop wearing those weird camel cargo pants, but bless him. Come in uh, handy. They do come in handy when we need to carry stuff. <laughs> Everybody we just, just all grab a loop. Over, we're all over the place today. Okay, I let's get it. back to po- – do we have any more toxic positivity points? Oh, I did have one more. Listen to this. Okay. Um, from my article. And yet, social media is flooded with messages about how to take advantage of quarantine. Obviously, this is from a little before. Start a side hustle. Be productive. Learn Only a new fans. foreign <laughs> – <laughs> but only my feet. That's where I draw the line. Uh, Be productive, learn a new foreign language, learn how to cook, make bread, reorganize the garage. Not everyone copes with stress by getting busy. And see, this is a hard one for me and Josh. I cope with stress by getting busy. Mm -hmm, Josh copes with stress by relaxing. Isn't that interesting? I have a girlfriend who, when she's super stressed out about her to-do list, doesn't do any of it because she's so stressed out. And I'm the I opposite. I will that. stay up till one or 2 a.m. being like, we got to get this done. I don't know why everything why has to be ironed. Like, right? <laughs> what is wrong with you humans? <laughs> you fuckers, get up. It's 2 a.m. Children, we all have a hands to-do on list. deck. Yes. I wrote a list. I wrote a list on the, there's one sitting downstairs this morning because Josh has been putting off stuff. And I was like, I need you to do this, 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 mm-hmm. and this. And then I wrote a list and I put all the stuff that we're both supposed to do on it. But it yep. said, um, Not everyone copes with stress by getting busy. And for many, these messages are harmful, leading to increased feelings of depression and anxiety. Direct quote, when the pandemic hit and quarantine began, I knew that toxic positivity was going to be a topic to tackle, Zuckerman said. I found that many of my patients and Instagram followers didn't realize they had the option to not conform to toxic Mm -hmm. positivity. During times of stress, our brains are already full, he says. Mm -hmm. So- Back away. And you and I talk about this a lot. You can just discreetly get off social media for a day, a week, a month, 
a year. You don't have to make a big announcement. You don't have to justify it to your grandma. Mm -hmm. Social media is a fake societal construct. It doesn't exist in the real world. If the internet went away, we would all be standing here. So if you need to take a break, take a fucking break. Mm -hmm. You are not required by law to be on social media posting if it is not a good place for you. And you're not required to follow all your friends. You can mute people. You can unfollow them. I've unfollowed numerous people that I know Mm -hmm. in real life during the pandemic just due to it is not there's nothing wrong with them Mm -hmm. it's just not a good fit for me yeah I agree and I found I was getting sucked into social media and when you are going through a hard time you turn into the compare game and the I wish game and so now I'm in an okay place but when I was in those hard places I feel like we do reach for our phones to kind of mind them And Mm -hmm. so I wouldn't allow myself to scroll. I would say, I'm going to be productive. I'm going to scroll the boards and plan our next trip. I'm going to scroll the buy, sell pages and get my daughter started on her fall wardrobe. And I wouldn't let myself go down the rabbit hole of, oh my gosh, things look so great in their life. And I wish, because let's face it, no one's life is perfect. And no, and I also have oh perfect is our (laughs) least favorite thing that's what our podcast should be called perfect is fucking boring the big thing is too and that what you said is right don't let yourself scroll find a productive outlet that's fun for you I also do occasionally and Jenna gets frustrated with this is I'll leave my phone upstairs for the first three hours of the day and so I think it's wonderful yeah but you can't get a hold of me and so it's hard with the podcast stuff and I can't do it on Mondays but I usually will try to only go on social media while my kids are eating which is three hours a day so Mm -hmm. don't worry I'm on there plenty and so but it doesn't interfere with the rest of my day and today my kids came in and said or the kids came in and Josh was like what were you guys doing out there and they're like well mom was reading a boring book and (laughs) we were doing this and we were doing that but they're seeing me reading a book which is a behavior I'd much rather them see than me watching other people's lives that I may or may not know on Instagram and what they're buying at the Nordstrom sale if you're experiencing job loss or child care Mm -hmm. issues or any of these a divorce or a romantic breakup or you know I I know people with health conditions right now that are struggling Mm -hmm. and like you don't want to know what's what influencers buying what blanket on the Nordstrom sale like and if you are struggling and you know that's not something that you can personally do like you can't (coughs) buy stuff because of job loss definitely don't be on those boards because that's just gonna feed that feeling of insecurity and I wish I want so just stay off that shit yeah. yeah. But I do, I do think it's great that you stay off your phone in the mornings. I get all my shit done in the mornings because my yep. kids sleep in, especially my daughter. Yep. She was up to like nine 30 this morning. What? Like, Girl. One of my yeah. other friends said her kids sleep till nine 30 and I was outside at like five 30 and we're, yep. we beat the, there's a rooster at the farm down the road and we beat the rooster <laughs> out almost every day. Yep. It was ever like, since like, the, the time change. My kids have really started to sleep. Oh. Ezra, my son slept to like eight something. So I get a lot done in the morning and then in the afternoon, good luck reaching me. Yeah. You're hard to get a hold of in the afternoon. Yeah. So we're kind of hard because I do yeah. mornings and you do afternoons. So sometimes you'll all, I always get on in the afternoon and see, I have six messages from Jenna and uh-huh. then in the afternoon, I leave you six and be like, yep. it, flip back and forth. I think a big part of this that we need to, as we circle all the way around, it is okay to not be okay. Yep. Let's get that all tattooed on our necks and mm-hmm. um, on your face if you want. It's your choice. It's your body. Um, it is okay to not be okay. In fact, right now, it is normal. And in this article, it says, anxiety is a very normal response to an abnormal situation. We are currently experiencing a shared trauma. No one mm-hmm. is alone in this. She adds, it is important to remove the expectation and goal of always feeling positive. I like that. So if we could strip away, just like you said, let's strip away the goal of always feeling good, the goal of always feeling happy yeah. and the goal of always feeling yay, rah, rah, rah. And like, let's focus on contentment and moving mm-hmm. with intention instead yeah. of trying to see how hyped up we can get everyone with our positivity. Yeah. I agree. And I'm just going to throw this one in there. We could go down a rabbit hole with this, but I'm just going to throw it. it out there. No, right? do it. Conspiracy theory so, time. No, it's... <laughs> If you find your friend is having a hard time and complaining, this is one, not the time for you to be like, oh yeah, me too, and spill your problems. 
And two, it's not a competition. I know this is big in like the AA, mm-hmm. all the anonymouses, anonymous fees. Anonymize. <laughs> <laughs> it's and my husband had to find the right AA group for him because he said he felt like a lot of times it was like a competition of yeah. who has the worst story. Yeah. And so let's also not do that. Let's just be authentic and be ourselves. If you're having a great day and your friend is not sit with them and be there for them. And then you can tell them later on when they're going through a better time about your positive things. But at the same time, like if they're going through a hard time and you're not, don't sit there and try and relate. Just let them have the floor for a minute. I know I'm bad at that too. Cause I always think like, if I say that I've had, I've experienced the same thing, it'll make them feel better. And I've made a conscious effort since the beginning of this year. And that's the, just the way I grew up. My family I grew up in was like, we relate to each other by saying like, oh yeah, that happened to me once, but it's actually super unhelpful. We've talked about it in other episodes. Yeah. So to sit there and just say, this is their moment. Pret- mm-hmm. And there's only one spotlight. It doesn't get to be on both of you. The person that is sharing their problem gets the spotlight. So if someone is experiencing a very real problem and you're in a social setting with them, say that you know is going to last for two hours, think to yourself, this is not my day. Mm -hmm. I don't get to talk about any of my shit today because they are in a real situation. Spotlight on them for the next two hours and let them vent and they're not going to take the full two hours. Then you can tell whatever little story you want to tell or whatever little anecdote you want to tell, but let them fully purge their feelings before you're like, and I'm terrible at this, but don't jump in with your, oh yeah, that happened to my aunt's second cousin once and everything turned out. Okay. So don't worry about it. It's fine. Yeah, Like keep the relatability there, Yeah, but it doesn't mean you have to go on a spiel about your story or your aunt's story. Or like you said, like if it's so far down the line that you're like my so-and-so, so-and-so just leave that shit out of there. And I will end it with it. I was fine in the end. Everything was fine. Don't (sighs) end it with that. You don't know that it's going to be fine for other fucking people. Their journey is not your journey. Yeah. And you don't know that it's not going to be fine or it is going to be fine. And don't, and I try to, that's what I try to do now is just say like, I've been there and I feel that. Yeah. But instead of saying my story, I've been there. I feel that it is really hard. You don't Mm -hmm. need to say I've been there because on March 14th of 2020, the, you know, (laughs) that date is just like forever seared in my brain. You don't (laughs) need to just continuously talk about yourself. And that's a part of toxic positivity. And I'm really bad at it. I even have it in my notes. I wrote in here, Janelle's really bad at this. But like, see, I don't think you're that who bad. Am I writing like, this? Oh, I wrote Janelle's awful at this. <laughs> Listen and validate others, even when it's different than how you feel. <laughs> and I think being a mom, we see this a lot. Mm-hmm. My kid, da, 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 da. oh, mine too. And then they go down oh, this yeah. whole rabbit hole. So like, and especially yeah. I do it with like people that are like, oh, I need my, my son might need speech or might need PT or might need OT. And I'm like, I'm an expert on all of those things. Like, <laughs> and see, I think that's I okay to some listen. extent. Yeah, it is. Like, but I should listen. I could listen to their story before I insert my story. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we could all get better at all of this, right? I, mean, no I think that, perfect, well, that's why so. we're talking about it because we're yeah. not supposed to talk about how we're not good at it. And that's what this, we didn't even that's introduce true. that this is done playing by the rules, did we? Yeah, we did. Okay. I don't know where you were, but I did. No, I took a break. I took a nap (laughs) during that part because I mean, I've heard it before. I know the fucking name. Another one that they talked about is the toxic positivity messages on social media. In particular, Mm -hmm. watch out for social media influencers because many promote toxic positivity by only posting their best looks, their best workouts, and what appears to be their perfect lives. They're They're perfect husbands, but yet they're now divorced and no one knows why. That's my yeah, favorite. Miss, like, those are my favorite. Yeah. Or they are perfect shots. And then you see what went on behind the scenes to get those oh perfect Lord. shots, I which know. we've talked about. You've heard us talk about. So yes, a million. Let's all just be authentic and try our best. If you have any tips or want to be friends, we're here. <laughs> <laughs> and unless you're toxic positivity and everything is rainbows and sunshine, then I don't know if I can do it, but Jenna will be no. your friend. I'll be your friend, but expect to hear my shit stories still. So. You're still going to hear Jenna's bummer stories. But exactly. um, again, our call to action is sitting with contentment and acting with intention and not yep. trying to strive for happy and positive all the time because it doesn't make other people feel better and it's too much work for us. We have enough shit to deal with. 
exhausting. Yeah, it's a lot. You guys got this and we love you. And with that, call your therapist. And take your meds. Two, three, four.